thank you everyone for coming to the Mas Rangga kita bahasa Inggris yang mulai Thank you everyone for coming to the Tech in Asia Game Talk The fourth event of our regular, hopefully, uh, <laughs> talk show about games and the industry Right now, it is such a pleasure for us to have two experienced um, publisher uh, One of them is uh, uh, a lab from another <laughs> studio a Chinese based publisher who is experienced in uh, publishing games worldwide and China Another one is Nicholas Lee or Yuki from British Internet an uh, Indonesian based publisher who is experienced in publishing games in worldwide and Thailand Asia. Yeah. Thank you, Nikki and Lai for for our pleasures. Yeah. 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 And especially fun because you you, <laughs> you, you come from such a long way. First of all, some of our uh, some of our audiences uh, maybe not really familiar with you or, or what you've been doing in your company. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about you and your company. Coming from Vlad, All right. Um, so yeah, my name is Vlad. I work for another indie. We're a Chinese-based uh, publishing company. So we help indie developers uh, and their games to reach a wider audience well, and publish them, whether it's in China or America or Europe or Russian territories, or West in general. So that means we have a lot of paperwork that comes with publishing on different platforms, such as either on Steam or PC or consoles. <coughs> um, so we do manage all of the social media, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, if need be. Uh, we also handle all the submissions and the bureaucracy that comes to going to shows. And if the publishers can make it to the shows, which is usually the case with Chinese companies because it's very difficult for them to travel, we go to shows instead of them and we showcase the games. Um, we also help them to have a successful launch, so we handle all the media assets, the preparation of the trailers, uh, the outreach to news outlets like Protaku, Polygon, VentureBeat, uh, and also to the influencers, Twitch YouTubers, or if it's China, then the local ones like Dolby, BD. I'll go into more detail about that. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty much that's it with all these video games. <laughs> Uh, what you what you watch in the screen behind him is some of the games that Amadou really has, has published in the past. Uh, is called? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Lost Castle. It's been already out on Steam uh, since first of September, so a bit like seven, eight months. Uh, we, and it did very well. Uh, yeah, it's currently recording it to PlayStation and Xbox, and hopefully gonna get it on Switch too. So it, it sold like 400,000 copies, so there you have it. Number one selling indie game in China. Oh yeah, this is a, this is a new game we picked up from uh, from Philippines. It's called Shots Fired. It's like um, very pop culture focused game. If you, any of you ever played, uh, you know, Finding Waldo in those little books, you know, the guy with the red and white stripes. It's pretty much like that, except when you find Waldo, you shoot him in the head. Um, it is made by two guys, one is the programmer, another one is an artist, and we expect to launch it on PC like uh, mid-August, it's gonna be out on Steam. It's pretty much two guys, they really like TV shows, there's a lot of references to Breaking Bad or any of the pop culture media. Yes, 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 no. Yeah, that, that's it, that's fine, it's absolutely fine. So, next to me. Or uh, Nikki, I think uh, it's going to be used on slide. Oh, yeah. Hello, I'm Nicholas from Prodigy and I'm uh, from the marketing divisions right now. And yeah, basically, we are a publisher, and right now we are expanding our company to the developers too, but it still takes a lot. Established by Mr. Budiman Piandi, which is our co-founder too. And right now we are not only special, uh, specializing in the games industry, but we also have some another company. So basically we are a larger group and we focus also on, the, let's say, a properties management, hospitality services. And then right now we have several uh, corporate
collaboration with another developers, let's say from China too, and we have several developers coming from uh, Europe. So basically this is all of the games that we launched. Uh, you can see that we started at 2010 actually. Uh, we start by publishing Rules of Magic and Kanan Online at that time. And it's gonna be like, until right now there is so many titles that we launch, I cannot describe to you one by one, of course. And yeah, this is our media, media partners. Some of them that we are using right now uh, basically keep supporting us from 2010 until now and it brings a lot of media coverage that which is very important for your games. Uh, this is several uh, developers that we also, you can see in the middle, developers and publishers that we also cooperate. Uh, we have uh, Perfect World and then Line Kong, 1UP, X-Pack, Toy Rock, etc. Et payment. I think uh, about payment, I cannot describe it too much because, because yeah, there is a lot of payment right now in the Indonesian region. So basically, they have the plus and uh, pros and co uh, cons by itself. So basically, that is about Prodigy Infinitex. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So both of you are uh, obviously experience in bringing games to the global market. And today, uh, tonight, I think we're going to focus on a few regions, especially the USA, the general English-speaking audience. Yep. And then we're going to talk about the China region. And then we're going to talk about uh, maybe Southeast Asia and a bit about Eastern Europe, right? Yep. That's good. Well, can you uh, tell us a little about, not just a little, uh, uh, what is okay to <laughs> you tell us about the game industry trend in those countries? Like, if if we are a developer and we want to publish a game in those countries, in those regions, what kind of games do do sell? What kind of games do they want? Yeah, sure. I can go first. So, if we're talking about China, like Chinese players, they really value the replayability of the game. Why Lost Castle did so well is because it's a roguelike game, so you can keep playing it and playing it, and once we implemented the local multiplayer and then the online version, it just keeps the player base going and people keep coming back to it, because uh, since uh, to finish the game, I think it's about 100 hours if you want to experience the whole content, because you beat it once, uh, then uh, there's a secret boss and you have to beat it second time, and then you beat it the third time, and then there's hardcore mode, which you have to beat twice. So there's like a lot of value in reliability, especially with Chinese gamers being really hardcore. Um, if we're talking about uh, the West, it's also very trend-based. There's no, there's no certain game I'd say like, oh, like this is the type of the game is if you're gonna make it, it's gonna be a huge hit or a huge success. Um, I mean, one thing I can say, for example, it's a bit starved for good horror games. That's why uh, Resident Evil did so well. Yeah. Outlaws 2 is doing uh, pretty good, and there are some others like uh, Dead by Deadlight, which is uh, which is online. Yeah, zombies. I like a lot of that. Um, but the roguelike genre is a little bit on the downside now because there've been so many games, so many people did those types of games, and it's kind of dying off. Um, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much it. I would say also, I mean, if it's a good game with a good story and solid concept and, and uh, you know, working core gameplay mechanics, um, it, it, will, it will probably work if, uh, if, you, if you get the, the needed media outreach and the attention. Um, and also going to shows helps a lot. Um, so yeah, what do you think? <laughs> well, uh, of course for me it's not very big difference, I mean, of course, the game itself has to be diverse in features, and then have the like a glad says that it had a value in a replay replayability. So basically, you know, for Southeast Asia players, actually they kind of uh, community based. So you have to create a games that how how to make them as a community being triggered by the content of the games itself. <laughs> So basically, 
And if you say that U.S. or probably another Western or uh, English-speaking countries, uh, basically it doesn't have any kind of genre which is they very likes or probably dislikes because everything right now there's so much games which is have its own niche niche market and it, it has its own player. So basically there's no certain kind of like like Vlad says that it's gonna be sells a lot if you create something like zombies type or, or probably puzzle things. So yeah I think it's very much the same. The trend is not gonna be like very very kind of big difference, have a big difference on it, no. But if you say that if a mobile games, I do agree if you could say in the Southeast Asian market is very, very uh, doing a lot of good, good, uh, good things. And let's say something like a mobile game in Southeast Asia, it's very, very progressing fast enough. And there's so much competition in that region. But if you say that, uh, client-based things in a Southeast Asian market, I don't believe it's going to be compete with uh, mobile games. I think that's for me. Uh, just like to add, uh, it pretty much comes down to have something unique, unique art style, unique concept, some game mechanic that nobody did before, something interesting, uh, and that would work. Just do not rehash, don't look like, oh, like this game did well, so I'm gonna make a similar game with similar mechanics, but I'll just, you know, make a different art style and it will work. It might work, it might work for one time, or it might work for a couple of people in the beginning, but, you know, it gives you later on a stigma and you'll probably get a bad rep as a, as a developer yeah. if you just start copying or, you know, reskinning some successful games. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. it. It has to be unique. It, I know it's a generic political answer, like, oh, just you know, make a unique game, but uh, that's pretty much what it comes down to. So, we can, we can say that if you, if you want to make a client-based game, like console game or, or PC games, then you are better, <coughs> you will fare better if you publish it in the global market, in the worldwide market like USA, and we're still speaking, but if we're talking about console games, yeah. then yeah, yeah, I mean China, for, but if you if you make like mobile games and online games, then you will, you will do better in China and Southeast Asia, is that it? Yeah, that, that's what it is, uh, I mean, uh, if we do better in China as mobile games, if uh, if you get the necessary funding, because it's very difficult to compete with Supercell or Tencent, yeah. Uh, like there's huge mobile game giants and uh, their, their games they just you know just keep releasing so many games but it's just impossible for small indie teams to compete unless it's like a, it's, it's something unique not you know just like your generic MMO point and click you know auto battle running around playing um, yeah but it's, it's it's a good thing to you know to get exposure to get more commentary in the game if uh, if you if you're doing mobile if you want to focus mobile gaming to go into the different shows in southeast asia like uh, coming up casual connect in singapore uh, it's like 80 percent mobile games so it's nice to be able to showcase there and then you will also get a lot of feedback from you know the, the local developers and the developers that come to visit and the gamers as well and then you can see like if you can improve something or change something or, or what players actually want so also big part which a lot of developers don't realize is uh, when you're making a game um, you can't just you know sit in the office 24 7 or at home and you know code and make a game and hope it works you do need those you know second set of eyes who can look at the game and see like oh, you know maybe you better do it like this and i'm not talking about your friends because like if your friends see you're making the game, they'll be like, oh man, awesome, you're making a video game, that's yeah. cool. Um, but you need somebody on the side, and um, again, this is a bit of a, if you have a publisher, they will do that for you, but also going to shows helps a lot, because you need other developers, and you know, maybe they will tell you something that you never noticed about your game, because they're, they're not going to be nice, they'll be like, oh, yeah, cool game, but you know, if you, you know, I think you should if you change that, it will make it a lot cooler, you know, the art there is a bit iffy. And, um, so you know, getting out there really helps. And there's several, there's so many shows right now everywhere, not only in the West. There's so many in Southeast Asia, like uh, there's ESGS in the uh, in Manila and Philippines. There's Game Star, Casual Connect in Singapore, you know, Tokyo Game Show. Uh, China has a bunch of game shows as well. 
Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay, man. I mean, yeah. Um, have you one last thing? No, I... Yeah, basically, it's already been <laughs> described <laughs> by the plan. But maybe what Flat says, you have to be... listen to another ideas. I mean, especially when we, we are uh, in an Indonesian region, I mean, we also look at the West, or probably in Japan, in Japan games, type of games, like you have to create some features like this, that, this, that, and you try to, uh, how I, how do I make those kind of things? Well, prob probably that is not the point. So the point is, try to create something that <coughs> engaging, of course, and right now we know uh, probably uh, some of you playing a mobile agents thing, they are only using something like a share, uh, share your results, your match results, and I think that is one of the features that make Mobile Legends more viral. You know, probably you see your in your Facebook uh, friends Facebook posts, you see them. Uh, okay, I have victory, something like a ten kills or something, and that keep engaging people to uh, what, what? Why is this? What kind of game is this? So even a single, a simple social media share could impact a lot. And for now, probably some of the developers also try to do the same. But just remember that even the sm smallest, the simplest features can do a lot. I think that uh, that's my point right here. Um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, next you can uh, we can start from Vicky first because the uh, we're going to talk about the Southeast Asia market. Yeah. And you have experience there, right? Yeah. So if you want to publish the and you want to target the Southeast Asia market, including Indonesia, I mean Indonesian developers like to create games for Indonesians, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of preparations do you need to to make? Uh, and what differences do they have uh, uh, we are uh, we publishing in global english speaking audience okay. uh, probably i want to know how many uh, mobile games developers right here right now can you raise your hands up i mean i kind of confuse uh, one two three how about a uh, pc or client web based things how many developers is PC. One, two. PC, yeah, PC. PC? Yeah, PC. PC? Four, five, six. Okay, I think, uh, should I explain it both or... If a mobile game, um, what kind of preparations? <coughs> of course, you have to do some uh, A-B tests. And not, also, not only A-B tests, uh, you can also do... Let's say for people in Thailand, they... From my personal opinion, and I have several... Uh, Thailand national friends, they like to play a lot something like uh, Brave Frontier probably. Yeah, they like something kind of an RPG and which you can switch class or something. So basically you have just to understand what kind of uh, taste they like. And of course you have to do some surveys or probably you do some research on in a couple of years back, what kind of games that boom in this area, things like that. So one, one time you already try to understand that, you just have to, okay, let's try something else. And you add some value, some additional value to it. So I think it's my, it might be worse for something like that. It depends on the taste of the regions also. And of course, localization, things like that. Of course, it's gonna be matters the most because when you try to market those kind of games, they will tend to believe what's written in their own uh, language. So I think, yeah, you have to understand what kind of the locals that you try to target to understand what they want, what kind of games that already been boom uh, for several years back. And I think it's very similar to like in the US market. Probably you cannot back to the first explanation. You cannot uh, describe some special 
needs them. Okay, I think the US market is gonna be 100% like a mobile RPG game. No, it's not gonna be like that. So basically what kind of thing that you have to perform is how to make your product itself a very, very interesting, a very engaging things. So basically I think the preparation just... Oh, and one thing you have to understand how to market your product. Let's say for the... Um, let's say for the Vietnams, I mean, you cannot like just throw your Facebook ads banner or probably Google AdWords things. You have to find the reg uh, regulations and rules or terms for publishing your games. Uh, you have to understand that each area is very different. I mean, of course, um, you cannot publish something like a more like 17 plus things. But we just we know that yeah it's gonna cost you a lower CPI or something. But yeah, I mean you could try to keep your marketing campaign much more like interesting, engaging, and try to hey, what is the reason? What is the reason why I should play play your games? That's what you put on your banners, uh, advertising banners. That's for me. If we're gonna talk uh, just like for the if it's PC and console games, like it doesn't matter if you don't even hit the target. If it doesn't, if the game doesn't even boom with with the proper preparation for the launch, you can still get those numbers that will pay for your cost of making the game and will also have you keep some money so you can work on your next project. Um, but I guess we'll be talking about that a bit later on, like what comes in the preparation for the for, for launching the game. Yeah, yeah. 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 One thing that the application said that I am a bit interested about is you said uh, you said localization in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Uh, do do all countries in Southeast Asia need localization? I mean, if you're talking about games like PC games or, or client based games, basically, uh, many gamers in our country, Indonesia, don't really care about mm. Indonesian language. They can just play in English. Yeah. Uh, what about the other countries? Do they care that much about localization? If you look at the performance side, I do agree about that. But if you look at the marketing side, it's going to be a total different story. For example, I have a several campaigns using a Facebook ads, and then I try to use English language uh, from category age like 17 to 28. I just promote it to Thailand, uh, Thailand countries, and then. I try to make my words English the very simple English. And from what my experience say that the cost of the marketing, the, the CPI, the cost per install for one game when I use that English uh, English sentences, it's gonna cost me around like 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. Uh, sorry, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. But when I change to the, I try, I contact my friend, hey, can you make me some sentence like mm -hmm. uh, uh, the best uh, RPG games 2017, let's say, in a Thailand language? When I try that, it cost me a lot much more marketing cost. Yeah, from the 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, I can get for the RPG games, which is 30 megabytes client in the first time download, around 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 in average. So basically that's localization, uh, localization things into your advertising campaign, it does affect a lot. So, and especially if you probably, uh, let's say like this, if you use some <coughs> Chinese language, Mandarin, Mandarin language, and you try to target it to Indonesian uh, country. What do you say? Do, do you gonna say that uh, the CPI is probably definitely is gonna be high? Uh, from my experience, it's not. When I try to use, uh, let's say, Chinese language to target the Indonesian region, it's the fact it says different. It's cost the same because it depends on the banner itself and et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna be a long conversation, but 
So basically, that's that's why the localization things is the very best, as, especially when you look at the marketing side of the campaign, because people people do feel like, yeah, I could understand this game, I could compete in this game, I could play this game very well, and I understand the stories, etc., uh, etc. Et and even though the game uh, using an English UI user interface, it doesn't matter. I mean, the first thing is how to make your users, potential users, to become your players. That's the first step. So that's why in the first campaign, if you're using the marketing, ad uh, advertising, online things, that is impacting your overall games. I think that that is for me. Well, it's very really interesting. I mean, uh, apparently the localization priority is marketing first, and then the, the game itself. Even if it's not localized, I mean, even, even if it's in English, Google will still play it as long as the marketing campaign is in their local language. What about you? But how is your experience in China? I mean, uh, I mean, with China, it's pretty simple. I mean, not simple, straightforward is a better word. Like, if you want your game to succeed in China, you need to have it into uh, simplified characters. You need to have it fully localized into Chinese Mandarin. And I, I don't mean translate, I mean localize, so that the people who are doing the job, which, as a matter of fact, my company does, <laughs> uh, that they use the, the proper slang and the terminology when localizing the game. So, you know, the, it, the jokes translate well, like, let's just say, if it's some uh, pop culture or, uh, like, you know, like a, a hype based game, so that the memes and stuff also kind of translate well because the, the internet language, the internet slang in China is completely different from what people speak in real life. You know, it's kind of with Japanese, like the people, the way people speak uh, on a daily basis does not equal how they speak in anime. You know? um, so yeah, you, you need to have that aspect, you need to have people who are well versed in uh, internet pop culture that's going on, that's, uh, that's in current and not just pure translation. Because if it's just you know simple Google Translate copy paste, uh, uh, the players will boycott your game. Uh, so th don't use online translators when it comes to Asian languages or sla or any languages of that fact. Like you can find anybody that at least will do a half decent job. For uh, diversity, is, diversity is in general, the game itself should be fully localized yeah. and not not I mean not just translated, but. You need to understand the the, the whole because uh, the, the, the the aspect of cultural difference comes into play. Um, so that, that that's that's a difficult part of it because you, you need to make it work for for Chinese players for Chinese audience so that they can relate to it. And they do adore the Western culture and you know they look up to America and you know, the TV shows and everything, but it, it still doesn't translate well. So you have to find. Uh, um, the right way to convey your meaning using, you know, the local means, but the, the, the Chinese culture, the, their pop culture, their internet slang, and how they do it. But maybe if a developer want to publish their game in China, it's better for them to hire a, a native, native, native speaker. Oh yeah, definitely. You got if somebody says like, oh, but, uh, but I studied interpretation and uh, I lived in China for eight years, like I okay, no, that's. That's one thing of you know studying the language, but if you're a native speaker, it's always going to be a different thing. So if you have, you, you need to get a native company to do it. So that's why we have our localization team is all Chinese people. Um, so they do it for us, and then you know just to check it. I heard from from uh, when we talk when we talk in the British office, we were talking about yeah. how hard it is to penetrate the Chinese market. Is is the language the highest? Barrier of entry, or do you, or did you meet other uh, difficulties in in entering the market? Basically, when we try to enter the market, mm. I do agree one hundred percent. Language is the most problem for the, let's say, another besides the Chinese country. Um, we try to say something, and then suddenly the feedback is not uh, what we are hoping for, and. If we try to publish there, I do agree about uh, about what what Flat saying that you have to hire a native speaker. I do agree about that because, in fact, we already know that it's so uh, there's so few people that could understand English in in China, and that's why I mean to remove the barrier soon. You need time. You need efficiency. I think the 
best way to have uh, people that who's good at translating those. But remember, I mean, games language and conversational language, when you try to translate it, it's a very different story. I mean, if you, let's say, um, fire a fire sword with thunder attachment, and if you try to translate it to Chinese language, it's going to be like, totally a whole, whole different thing. So yeah, I think we need some translation uh, translator that do understand about games. So, because of that, different meanings could cost you probably uh, selling of your items not going to be sold very good. I think it's that. And you also mentioned uh, about regulations in countries like Vietnam. Uh, what about the regulations in other countries in Southeast Asia or in the China? Mm -hmm. Do they have special, special regulations you need to, to bring? Uh, I mean, Again, we're going to be talking about China. <laughs> um, depending on uh, which platform, if you want to publish your game officially in China, you need to pass the local censorship law. Like it's called GABB, which means uh, once you have your game ready, you send, uh, you file all the documents, you pay the submission fee, and you send it to the government agency for approval. And it can take up from three to six months until you hear back from them. And there's so many little nooks and crannies. It's like, oh, uh, you have red color over here. We don't like it. We need to change it. They send it back to you. You need to change it. You send it again. And it takes time and it keeps going back and forth. Um, for example, uh, Diablo 3, uh, the Chinese version does not have skeletons because it's illegal to have skeletons in your game. So they've changed all the skeletons into zombies. The same thing happened to uh, World of Warcraft. All the blood is not red, it's green because you can't have uh, red blood. Uh, with one of the recent games, we just managed to get the license was Ziggurat for to release on PlayStation in China, and it took us a year to get the uh, to get the GABP license for that game because we will always be going back and forth, back and forth for like we don't like this color or this pixel is not like that or oh you have thief written thief is no good you need to change it. I mean it's obviously in Chinese language, so it's like thief can't be thief. You have to change it to like trickster, or joker, or clown. Um, it just takes time and money and effort and a lot of, you know, if you're a small company, you have two, three people developing and working on a game, um, you don't have time to do that. So that's where the publisher comes in to handle it. That's if you want to get the license. Thankfully, Steam is not blocked in China. And if you want to publish your game on Steam, you don't need the GAPP license. Um, so that removes all of that hassle. Unfortunately, this only comes for, you know, PC games. Uh, when it comes to mobile gaming, they just passed a law uh, this summer, I think it was like July, uh, which cut down, it's like if you want to publish your game, you need to pass the license. So when in before in China, you would have uh, like 100, 150 games launching in the App Store every day, now you get maybe like 10, 15 games a month that get the licensing done so they can launch officially. Otherwise they use like, you know, secondhand stores like Fido or, or whatever. Um, to launch their games. So, so that's that's the big problem, to get that licensing fee. Uh, but mostly on Steam, so far so good. You don't have to have it unless you want to publish on consoles, like on Chinese. But as you know, uh, the ban only got lifted a couple of years ago. So Microsoft, Xbox One, there's maybe like five people have that console in the whole country. Three of them is developers. Uh, PlayStation has a bit bigger presence presence in China, they're, they're pushing it there, but it's still very, very, very small. Um, yeah, it, it, it slowly it's picking up, but it's gonna take a time when it's more open, because everybody just buys huh, their consoles from Hong Kong or Taiwan or Japan, they're not region locked, and, you know, it works. So is it okay for, you said that if we use Steam, if we are publishing it in Steam, we can bypass the, the uh, regulation, regulations, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about the sales itself? I mean, uh, if you publish on Steam, then you probably probably will, will not translate it to Chinese, right? I mean, you're not specifically targeting the Chinese market. How do those games perform if you go on localize? Uh, well, they pretty much don't get any traction in China then, because if, if you want to, if you if you're talking about again PC games and you want to publish them, you want to reach the Chinese audience, and you say like, okay, I'm gonna release on Steam. Uh, you need to have Chinese localization, there's no question about it. 
and then you have to you know prepare yourself for the launch you need to reach out to you know the proper social media platforms to the proper influencers because as we know in china google is blocked youtube is blocked twitter is blocked facebook is blocked instagram is blocked just like the list goes on so they don't have twitter they have weibo which is like a chinese twitter they don't have facebook they have renren so these are the platforms you have to use oh uh, twitch is blocked um so if you want to get your streaming needs you use different platforms like bilibili or douyu or panda tv and the way it works in china um, it's a bit different so if you want somebody to stream your game you just contact them and be like hey i'm going to pay $10,000 will you play my game for a week and they're like all right i'll do that um, <laughs> as an example so that's, that's normal there like it, it's absolutely normal it's a part of the culture like you pay them and you also can pay the news outlets like oh uh, so how much Will it cost me for a 1,000 character article? And they're like, oh, it will cost you this much. I'm like, all right, cool. Can, can you get it out on the 26th, like two days after the launch? Like, yeah, okay, okay. So good thing is like it lets you micromanage your launch or if you have any promotions of coming with Steam, like daily deals or you get featured and you want to get that extra push, you'll be like, all right, so you contact the streamers. Of course, you need to have the connections with them. That's where the publisher comes in. Uh, and then you tell them like, all right, so for a week we're gonna have this promotion and I want our game to be streamed 24 seven by mid-level or high-level streamers. How, uh, here's a budget, how we can do it. And then you can work with them. And, um, and the same with the news website. You can, you know, you can make a timetable. I want on this day, I want this article, on this day, I want that article, I want at 4 p.m. I want this thing to go live. And you can do that. And uh, every time we did that, Oh, it, we, we, we got the budget we spent, we got triple or quadruple uh, times back. Like, uh, we had, uh, just last, last week we had a daily deal with Steam, with our Lost Castle. In those two days we sold 20,000 copies. So that's, that's, that, that's a PC game, again, but it's, it's different with the mobile market. Because uh, when we come back to the West, you can't message a streamer or a, or a YouTuber and be like, hey, I'm going to pay you like uh, $5,000, make a video of my game. You're going to get blacklisted and nobody's going to work with you. you, know? you can You can't do it in the West, where in China and uh, also in Russian territories, Russian-speaking countries, it's, it's quite similar. So that, that's allowed. It's just, just how it is. It's really interesting. I mean, the, the culture is. I'm not saying that, that the culture is wrong or per se. I mean, it's it's just, just it's just called it different. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> okay, so for the next one, uh, if a uh, developer want to publish new game and they want to approach the publisher, when should they go? You can start I, I think Prodigy uh, usually approach developers first. Or do the first publishers? We are publishers and trying to transform into uh, developers, hopefully. Oh, yeah. okay. you're, you're going to but basically, what we, what we do concentrate on is still our publishers. Because, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what I want to ask is, if a developer wants to publish their games, uh, when should they approach publisher, and what should they bring? When, when the in terms of matter of time, yeah, when, yeah, I mean in, in the most development stage. Oh, usually uh, kind of office that we had, uh, it's already been like a full client. Let's say a mobile, mobile, mobile apps, APK things. You just have to bring your APK, and it's ready to publish. At least ready to be published around. 60 to 70 percent, which is the 30 percent less, probably is just like a minor bug or probably a mix, uh, missing some translations. And you, of course, you have to bring out your power, which is why why should we see your games? And honestly speaking, we do see how do you monetize this game. Of course. Uh, I'm not gonna try to tell a lie. I mean, we have to see how can this game generating money at least. How how do you make yourself? Um, how do you make the people popping up to your game do some recharge or things? And that's why uh, many of the developers that we met, uh, they try to read the 
market's mind what do they need, things like that. Which is, honestly, it's very important. I mean, let's say the hard word is we, we are not trying to say that idealistic is a bad way. No, it's not going to be like that. But still, idealistic and you versus con uh, commercial things, that is have to be balanced. So you cannot be too much idealistic, and in one time you have to be a commercial one because every 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 side have its own down, downsides. So that's that's what I think. I don't know if uh, you have different ideas. Yeah, I, again, but when when it comes to uh, let's say PC, PC games, uh, I usually uh, well, what we ask for when when. when uh, Developers ask us if, if we can work with them. Uh, a working build, which is maybe like 40, 50 percent done, could could be less. It's fine as long as like showcases the gameplay, so it's like 10, 20 minutes of core gameplay. Like the other features can be added later on. Um, a, G, a game development document, so we know you know the story, how it's gonna work, and you know what are the ideas uh, of the developers and. Uh, you know which platforms you want to publish it, and that's that's pretty much it. And then our our team can play the game, and uh, then we have some feedback, and then uh, we can see if we can work with it, or if it's something that can work in China, or it's better than work in the West, or if it needs some adjustments for certain demographics. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you can send uh, a working build, uh, that's that's more than enough. That's it. Particularly the developer who who proposed their games should also know how to sell their games. Well, they should know why people will play their games. Is, is that what you uh, say? Or, or will you, as publisher, uh, adjust the game so they will <coughs> fit the market? Well, we, we never adjust the game. We're, I mean, we, we, all, we always give suggestions, but in the end, it's up to the developers if you want to you know, take them yeah. or not. And it's their games, it's so not, not really making them. Uh, uh, we do tell them, like, oh, if you, if you want to focus on the Western market, uh, yeah, for example, if it's any of the side-scrolling games, you're like you have to have a controller support. Like what we had with Lost Castle when we first got them, the game was in a very rough stage, and it was only playable with the keyboard and mouse. We're like, all right, I, it might work in China, but if you want to sell it anywhere else, like you need to have a controller support. Like there's no other way around it. And they did it. And the same thing was like you know multiplayer. And, like there's those little aspects again, depending on the game. Um, yeah, so they should always have an idea like uh, where they want to launch it or where is their target demographics, target audience. Um, but as long as they have a working build, uh, that's a start and uh, then we can see how it goes from there or, or, or which one is the best way to go, like either in Asia or you know, worldwide or just the West. I think it's pretty much the same. Much it, yeah. Right? <laughs> so basically, yeah, you just have to bring out your game, your APK, your client, and then make sure that everything is playable. Um, you have to understand your own games, of course. Wh where's the selling points, or, or do you sell the stories, or probably do you sell uh, sell the features, fashions, or probably um, the interactions. The, you, you believe this uh, this game would be like a growing a uh, huge base of a fan base or things? Yeah, pretty much the same. I think it's not very much different. Uh, I guess this will be the last question. Uh, what single thing do you think is most important for developers if they want to publish their games globally? Right. Yeah, first. I, I don't get any downtime. Yeah. Do I? I'm, I'll give you a minute here. <laughs> There's so many things. Um, the, most the, mo the most important thing, I guess, that you, that, sh that the idea of the game you can make can uh, line up with your, uh, that your expectations of your game line up with your ability. Because what we've seen that has happened a lot, that people have these great grandeur ideas, you know, I'm gonna make this game, it's gonna be like this, like that, like that, and then they start making it, and then there's like, you know, drawbacks, oh, like, this is gonna take longer, this is gonna take longer, and they keep falling back on their schedule, 
and uh, then they run out of funding and then there's no game. So you, the, the thing that kills a lot of um, indie developers is uh, you have to be very strict with yourself. You have to keep to that schedule. You have to have your schedule like, all right, like in three weeks, you're going to have to be ready. Like in the next six weeks, you have to have this, this and this done. And it's especially um, if you want to have a successful launch, you have, a, you have to have a tight and strict schedule and you have to follow it. Um, but yeah, the most important thing is obviously, this is going to sound pretentious, but you know, you have to have passion. <laughs> like if you don't want to make a video game, don't make it. You still have to have that desire, that, that burn to make a good game. Because if you're just like you know, rehashing, going through the motions, uh, it does show in your final product, it will show in your game and people will be like, eh. Okay. <laughs> Probably let's say uh, what Fla uh, tried to say to him. The first thing is always ideas. The second thing is, do you can adjust your games to the market needs? That is the most important one, of course. Which is otherwise, well, from what I'm saying before, <coughs> if you're too idealistic, you're not trying to make yourself a profit. And then a timeline and probably a good. If you try to publish it by yourself, you have to have a good marketing campaigns in your mind, of course, but if you don't have, uh, let's say, honestly speaking, like budget or things, you just have to have a good engagement with your small communities because if you gain their trust, I do believe it's going to be big by itself. For you know, Let's say we, we already have uh, several developers from our country that survive just because their games is very, very kind of unique, and then the interaction is good. We can see in the Play Store the reviews is like 4.8 stars, just because their games is unique, and then yeah, it sells a lot. Um, another thing is like uh, the most important thing is good customer support. <laughs> Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, in a, a, uh, probably you, you guys already know that if our games like having a, main t a maintenance session and, and we try to contact what happened and, or probably try to read the websites and still contacting the customer service and what happened to your games, I do already invest a lot of money in here. Yeah, I think that is also a good one because from a community, if they review you well, if you have a good customer service, it's kind of like a, hey, this game is very, very caring for its gamers. Uh, why not try to play this game? It's because the, the customer service is good. In early days of Prodigy Infinite Tech, we do have a good customer service. And when the game launched in the international servers, and tried, uh, we tried to, uh, we already bought it here to try to publish it here. Suddenly, there is a lot of international players coming to our servers, and we try to know why, what, what, what happened. I mean, why, why you play in our servers? Because there are uh, also says that hey, the game is lagging. That is our time to ask them uh, what happened. Uh, what, why you play our games? Because you already in the international server. They say that hey, your community is very, very engaging. Yeah, you are the customer service is good. The fan page, uh, if, we try, uh, if we comment on something, the community managers, the, uh, or you can say the customer service is replying to us and hear what do we suggest. That is one of the things that always been forgotten by the developers or publishers alike because people interaction, your, your players, your king. Let's say something like that. If you hear them well, you try to understand them well, of course, they will promote your game by itself, by themselves. They're gonna ask their friend, hey, this game is good. This, this service is great. Why not try to play it? I do believe so. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's all. So we can conclude that the first thing, the first, uh, the most important thing is uh, for developer who want to publish their game, First, they need to, to finish the game. 
Of course, yeah. yeah of course, game. of course. And then the second, they, they need to uh, make the game uh, unique with, with so many ideas. Ideas, yeah. And then the third one is uh, great customer support. The third one would be like the capability to you to adjust your game as the market needs. Of course, that, that is the third one. Like, yeah, that, that, prolongs the, that prolongs the longevity of the game. So yeah. If you're doing it as team, you have to have you, know, you have to be in those discussion boards. You have to yeah. have the support for the players for the bug reports, and you have to have a strong social media presence. So you have to be on Twitter, you have to be on Facebook, uh, you have to do all of that daily. Okay, thank you, Nikki and Vlad. It's been such a great talk we have. And now we're going to well, maybe we can give a last word. <laughs> I mean, if there are any questions, yeah. Um, I know we're going to end up the question and answer sessions. Uh, we we already have a few questions <coughs> in the slide. This on the slide. Oh my god! Uh, maybe we can start with the most right, uh, most most helpful question. What's your other contribution aside from helping publishing the game itself? I want to go first. Uh, <laughs> take the developer side and I take the marketing side. Uh, uh, first. <laughs> no, what's the bigger kind of biggest contribution is we actually help Chinese developers, you know, to break the stigma of Chinese game being just secondhand ripoffs. <laughs> Come on, we all know that, honestly. You like you think made in China, you're like, oh god. It's cheap, but you know, not viable. Because uh, recently we just uh, brought 12 Chinese games to PAX to, sh to showcase, and it has been a blast. So people are starting to notice more and more that actually, hey, China, Chinese market is not so close, and you get into it, you can tap into that, and uh, the games that are coming out of there are actually good games, it's just, you know, difficulty of getting the exposure because it's such a closed country. And also helping, um, you know, the Western developers to get a, at least some sort of a foothold in China because the players there are content starved. And if you have a great game, I believe that, you know, even if your country censors it, you, you players still deserve to play it. Uh, which question I should answer first? <laughs> which other? The first one is What's your other contribution aside from help and publishing the game be so Okay. If you are uh, indie developers, um, of course, uh, we, we are going to help you publish the game in software. But the side effect will be like, you're going to be much more understand uh, what kind of players, what kind of uh, age range, genre, or things like that. You will be have a better understanding of your own capabilities. Let's say if you create a zombie games or something, and suddenly we we publish your games. You of course you you're gonna have a lot of input from your players, and that keeps you uh, try to motivate yourself to improve your own game. You know what to do. Uh, oh, for Indonesian country, uh, the gamers uh, suggest us always try to make a wayang character or something so you try to create those and you try to expand your ideas from from the supports that you get i think yeah that's it no funding i'm sorry no funding from publishers of course there's funding of course there's i mean we we don't have to ask about that of course there's some funding why not Yes. Yeah, I think for the question. Okay. Other than other than publishing, you also help the developers to improve their, themselves. Right? Yeah, yeah, that is that is the most important things because what do I say before that? You have to understand. I mean, your games. Too much idealistic is not good enough. Uh, too much commercial is also not good enough. So basically, you just have to be balanced. You have to understand what to do and what to react. What what are you trying to develop? Things like that. Yeah. Let's say 
first one is, is... Oh, do you have any tips to contact the journalists from another country to review our games? Oh, okay. In the first time, uh, from my experience, when we try to publish our games internationally for the first time, what we are trying to do is email. <laughs> just email. I mean, you just have to email the, uh, let's say, the past server. If your game is um, uh, PC or client or web-based games, you just have to have a test client. So the publisher will be able, uh, the, the journalist or the media will be able to try to test the game itself. And then you also have to create the, let's say the, the, the profile of your games, the features, things. And then after that, just explain to them why I do believe that my game is very special. I mean, they media very, very likes um, something like a over, over optimistic things. Because let's say, hey, my zombie games, I do believe if, uh, if you review it, it's gonna trigger, um, trigger a, a lot of comments or something like that. And of course you have to do some surveys because you don't know, do, do some survey or research because you, you don't know which one is the good one or which one is the better one. Uh, especially for the journalists, they're gonna try to, how to say, um, I, I, uh, <laughs> I have to say that. Um, uh, forget the, the last part, I think, yeah. I mean, uh, one of the things is like, yeah, you can email them with your with your build, uh, but uh, also what actually works uh, a bit better than uh, than emails is you contact them on Twitter. You check out who's the writer for like Polygon or Kotaku or the writers in Gamma Sutra, and most of the time they have their personal Twitter or you know Facebook pages, and if you contact them through those, it gets this a little bit of you know personal connection and they're more likely to answer to you rather than you know just sending out generic emails uh, and another thing but that in involves you know having some sort of the budget is uh, to go to shows uh, like uh, PAXs or any other ones uh, where the media is there and you can meet them face to face and then it's easier to get them you know to take a look at your game um, one of these shows which is really good to visit is uh, is Bit Summit. It's in Japan, in Kyoto. It's actually 20 to the 21st of May. I mean, it's too late to go there now, but uh, next year, if, if anybody's interested, all of the big uh, gaming media are there every year. Like Kotaku, Polygon, yeah. Kotaku, Polygon, Venture B, Gamma Sutra, right? Just everybody's there. Also, people from Nintendo, people from Xbox, people from PlayStation. Everyone you need to know if you want to work in this industry is there at that event. And it's a small event. It's a very small one. So usually it's like 20, 25 games being showcased. And even if your game doesn't get accepted, you can still go there and buy a normal ticket. And that one is a really worthwhile investment. And then of course you have all the PAXs and uh, you know, game style in Singapore, Casual Connect. Uh, uh, for mobile games in Singapore is very nice if you go to Europe or uh, America, casual kind of there is more PC based. This is this just my opinion as a uh, media uh, yeah. I mean, right. Should be asking you this question instead of us. I'm not answering the question. I mean, this is an opinion about, about uh, the connection between our developers and the media. Yeah. The media is very important, right, for, for marketing your games, yeah. especially if you're uh, a small developer. I mean, just one review from a big media is enough to decide your fate, whether your game will make it, will it, make it or die. But, uh, based on my experience, <laughs> uh, Indonesian developers, uh, uh, there are still so many Indonesian developers who, who, who are not used to uh, interact with media. Like they, don't know, they, they, don't know how to, they don't know how to make press releases, they don't know how to contact properly. I mean, in the game industry, we, uh, we we like casual communications, right? But yeah. if you're too casual and, and maybe, you, maybe you, you send an email to a media and you just say a few words or maybe uh, two lines of sentences, we will, we will think that, oh, these this guys are not serious. 
I think that's also a, 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 an, a, an aspect of our our developers that we need to improve. Uh, they need to learn how to interact with the media. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just in my opinion. <laughs> Next question. Uh, the second one, I think we can work on. This one? Or the third one? Do you want to answer the third one? I think, oh, I think this one is still connected to the previous question. Yes, this is good. When should we start? That's the question. Should we start? Yeah, that's the question. Should we start using our games? How many times? <laughs> 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 okay, so you want to answer the third one? Yeah. Yeah, this. Which one? Just pick a random number. Yeah, just short notice in Steam Direct. We don't really know much about it. I mean, uh, they haven't even announced uh, the price tag. For all we know, it can be a hundred bucks, could be a thousand five hundred. But so what it means, uh, I guess, for publishers, it gives us the chance that developers will be uh, more open to work with publishers because we can provide you know this uh, the green light submission fee, and it also should filter out all the you know trash games that, that people submit just for shits and giggles. <coughs> Okay, well, when, when when should we start introducing marketing in our games? Um, yeah, that's that's a trick one. It's gonna see uh, how far your game is in development, like whoa, how many months you need till you can publish it, when you have the final bill. Um, again, do not publish your game in September. That's where all the triple A's come out. That's a very bad time. It will get buried, and it will not. No. Uh, the same goes for like December, like autumn in general is a bad time. So if you want to publish a game, it's a good time to do it in August or I'll uh, say like late February, March. Because uh, in January, again, everybody spent their money on, uh, yeah. on games during Christmas sale. Everybody spent their money buying presents for the family. So nobody have, has any money in January. Uh, again, in September, everybody's going to be buying your next Uncharted, your next uh, Mass Effect. Well, not Andromeda, but uh, <laughs> GTA. Um, so, uh, games get buried. But if you launch your game, say, like a week before, first of September, two weeks before, people already are hyped up for you know the next AAA title, but they have nothing to play. But then, and then they see, like, oh, like this indie game for like $10, $5, like it's only $5. It's, uh, a lot of it depends on the price tag as well. You know, if it's under ten dollars, it's a it's a it's a good price for for an impulse buy. Uh, again, if you if you want to launch it, you need to start prep work about four or five months before. You need to prepare a lot of social media assets like gifs, images, screenshots. You need to make um, several trailers. You need to have your teaser trailer, which is like a 30 yeah. second, 40 second trailer to showcase like the base of the game. Uh, then you need to have your gameplay trailer, then you need to have your story trailer, and then you need to have your launch trailer, which goes live uh, on the launch date. Then you need to have your media list, one list for all the news outlets, uh, with all the emails you need to contact, and then another list for all the influencers, like YouTubers and Twitch people. You have to have uh, final builds ready at least a month before launch so you can uh, send them out because you send it out the build for press and you put an NDA on it and you're like all right here's the build here's our game if you want to check it out so blah blah blah, blah. and uh, you type uh, you tell them when you want uh, the NDA to be lifted let's say like okay a week before your the articles about our game can go live uh, or then oh, it's also a good idea to have some of them go live like uh, on the day of the launch or like one day before launch, so people get excited and they're like, oh, and then they buy it. Um, and the same goes for the Twitch streamers and YouTubers. You send them a build and you're like, all right, uh, you can uh, you can play the game, but you can't disclose anything. You can uh, the streamers can go live say uh, a day before or on the launch day. And YouTubers, they should uh, put out their videos one two days before, or again on the day and the day after. Uh, so you get a little bit of that interest before the game launches, and then it keeps continues and growing. And also good to have uh, some media posting articles after the launch, like on the first week, two weeks, because uh, if you're publishing on PC, if you're publishing on Steam, the first two weeks is very crucial to your success. If if you if you have a successful solid launch, Steam is more willing to work with you later on, like you know, to get featured, to get the daily deals, to get everything. Whereas if you have a bad launch, you know, 
uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get any promotion out of Steam because they do look very closely at that thing. So if you can make those 10, 20,000 sales in the first weeks, you're good. So you know, the next thing is a lot easier. Um, and it also transfers into social media. But then another question is, uh, um, if, if some news outlets pick, pick up your game, they usually share it on Facebook and that just transfers into Facebook and into, into your stuff. Uh, with the influencers, it's the same. Um, if, if you get that game, it, it transfers into social media. And it's always best to contact YouTubers and streamers on, on Twitter. They're more like, it, it again gives that a little bit of a personalized feeling. Yeah, but that's like in a nutshell. Uh, very fast. <laughs> it's not complicated to make the NDA. Um, oh no, no, it's just it's like you can you, honestly you can just Google it. You can get like the standard form from uh, like a standard lawyer form, and you just you know change the name of the company, change the dates, change the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not even kidding. Uh, that's how you do. It. You don't have to have a lawyer, you know, draft it out. There's there's many examples on the internet which you know uh, copyright free that you can use and. You, you won't get any backlash. It's just like a standard form, like, we give you this game, please do, you are not allowed to release any of the information before this set date, blah, 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 this company, this company number, blah, 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 this game signature stamp. Um, yeah, you just can get them off the internet. <laughs> I think there, there's a question that I, I personally am interested about. I don't know if that one is called a Hello. We did not see that question, all right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, which one? The which more better before with more power? Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I was not, I was not about to ask that one. I was not about to ask that one. What's the thing about the Indian? What's the thing about the Indian? Oh, yeah, no. Ah, this one, the third one. How much impact has been seen by media? Which one has been impacted by the media? As a media guy, obviously, I, uh, we, we used to review games and, and give exposures to the developers. But from your standpoint, as a publisher or as a, as a developer, how much you make? You're gonna, you're gonna hate me for this. You're gonna hate me so much. And probably take an Asian guys as well. I apologize. But uh, if you're gonna be talking about, you know, purely business aspect of it, of this is like, oh, how does it transfer into sale? Um, in the past, um, let's say, if you get picked up by a streamer or a YouTuber, it's a lot better for your sales than you get featured. Don't call Those things like you get the hype, you get the, uh, you know, you get like, oh, that's a cool game. And like people like it and share it on Facebook, people tweet about it, but it does not transfer into sales very well. Because most of the people who actually read these websites are developers themselves, who most likely already have the game, you know. Or, you know everybody knows everybody in this industry. It's, it's quite small still. Um, so the you know the the influencers are the ones that will give you the uh, the most of, of the sales. Which not to say it's not good to get featured. It's great, but if if we're talking about just like purely of the sales standpoint, like if, for as an example, we had uh, one or one one uh, big streamer stream Lost Castle in Germany. Uh, the guy had like a hundred something K followers. I mean, oh, and oh my god, like we we made. So we sold several thousand copies of the game in like a couple of days just because he played it, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's that's like that. Unfortunately, that's just the numbers. Yeah, it's 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 not doing really well. Um, it's just all, all on Facebook, all on Twitter, and everybody just you know people are getting more and more lazy to read. They rather you know click on a one, yeah. two, one, two minute video talking about the game and showing than you know reading for an article and scrolling through it. Uh, what about uh, Lucky? I mean, the, uh, your portfolio is very different from the class, right? Well, yeah. For me, I mean, there is two certain cases which if. One of our games are reviewed by media. There is uh, one case that when we try to publish this into this media, suddenly the DAU or probably you can say the top up is rising so much high that we never expected before. Because we just at that point we just 
um, target. Okay, we try to make people play, but we are not expecting that 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 games will be rise rose so much in the DAU things. So I'm not saying that media will be definitely higher than the social media, but because we can see the example when I say that mobile agents just using the social media sharing as their features and suddenly the game itself goes boom and suddenly there's a lot of people sharing those results and suddenly uh, I can say that in my experience media did help a lot I mean especially for the Southeast Asia region when you try to publish your game and suddenly the, uh, this media reviews you and suddenly <coughs> it it just happens that your DA is rising up and so basically I cannot answer the exact answer for this question because for me still in the marketing side the media and social media is both important so it doesn't mean that you have to okay I'm, go I'm just gonna try to focus on the gaining some media contact or something else like that. No, I'm not going to say things like that, but definitely both of them is important. And we cannot say which one is the most profitable or probably the most benefit for you. I cannot say. Um, and I think, yeah, another question probably. I guess the next question will be the last. Okay. And for the last question, Toto, tolong di scroll bawah. I think we're going to answer this one. Which which one is the better to focus focus on? Well, you already have more. So. Oh, cool. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, the last question is the question that you guys didn't want to answer. It's, it's a very simple answer. There is no answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, I do agree about. It's, it's, it's different platforms. It works differently. Like mobile market, it, it, its own thing. Console and PC games are, you know. This other thing, it just it depends. If, if you're asking like it has its own niche, it depends on your skill or what you like more. If, you, if you're <laughs> here into you know mobile programming, then yeah, the mobile games you won't be able to do the PC games. If you're more versatile in coding, um, you know, on, on your laptop, uh, on your computer, then uh, try to do. It comes down to personal preference, guys. There's maybe. there's no such thing as like it's better to do PC games or maybe better to do mobile games. I guess if you have, uh, it's, you know, PC games usually take more time to flesh out and, and, and release um, because uh, mobile games, uh, for, you, you can get them out faster in comparison. Uh, but both require an equivalent amount of work, which, but, you know, it's a different type of work. But, you know, from marketing and PR standpoint, it, still, you need, to, you need to do your things and you need to do your promotion. But it's just like, Obviously, if you're living in China, don't do console games, but, you know... Why? Yeah. Why? Probably they won't. Because there's maybe 50 people in the whole country who have a console. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's I mean, uh, the consoles were banned in China for a very, very long time. Yeah. I think that was like four years, four or five years ago, they only just lifted the ban from consoles. And there's still that stigma with the parents that kids or grown-ups can't play video games because it's unseemly. So, hence, nobody has, you know, an opportunity to own a console. Where that's why the mobile games are so popular because they can just play it on the phone, and the parents won't know. And the same goes with the internet cafes. Hence, why League of Legends, Dota, and the equivalents of such are, are very popular there. Like the Overwatch as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think from a marketing side, if you ask me which more, uh, which more better to focus on mobile or console or PC, well, I could say mm, from a different viewpoint that I think you could do mobile because we know that a lot of people right now have uh, access to the mobile and they tend to play mobile games because it's much more easier and that, um, yeah, I mean, every everyone use mobile right now. It's just like statistics numbers wise, there's yeah. more people with mobiles than, you know, people with PCs who play video games. Agreed. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. So basically, yeah. You can do it by the numbers, like, yeah, go mobile. Go mobile. Yeah. Agreed. Don't. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, I, do, I, do, I do understand that probably you guys uh, have a difficulty something like, hey, 
if I'm built a PC game, would it, would it be like much more easier to do the marketing stuff? I could say that in my experience, my personal experience, I do have a lot much more easier work to do when I publish on mobile games. One, it's not very cheap to, uh, it's, not, it's not very expensive to, well, yeah, you know, Google Play Store, you just have to upload your IPK there and uh, blast it into, through the social media and ask your friends or probably your connections to play and then give a reviews. But if a console game or PC game, probably it's much more difficult for you to find uh, uh, the source, the channel that could help you publish the games. So that's why I choose, in my personal opinion, I choose uh, mobile. But if it's in the general opinions, I do agree about Flat's answer. You just have to do which one of you do the most best. Because otherwise your, your product is not going to sell so well. I do believe so. Okay, I guess the, that was the last question. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time and for your uh, very useful insights, very useful help for the analysis. I think. Uh, oh, do you want to add something? Glad to no, want to add. Add. <laughs> How much money do you usually spend to market an indie game? Yeah, just, just a quick answer. Do developers take care of using some game journals? Because if, if a journalist writes bad review about your game because he doesn't agree with uh, your worldview, he's a bad journalist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> journalists have to be naked. And people notice that they're like, oh, he's just bashing this game because he doesn't like ponies or something like that. <laughs> I'd be like, screw you for not liking ponies. <laughs> it's a good game. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, you shouldn't be worrying about that because even if they do write a bad review, people will notice it. And if anybody is gonna free have a bad promotion, the journalists will have a bad So how much? How much? This kind of money. I could say. I'm not sure if I can divulge the numbers. Uh, I get totally. me in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, again, it, it varies. It, it varies. Um, <coughs> Um, how much is the least? How much is the most? Have you spent? Okay, we could say things like that. Yeah. No, no, uh, if, if, you, if we're talking about average, it's, it's like, yeah, like yeah. I mean, um, the, 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 I mean, we, we, we spent, we spent, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> 100,000? How much? 100,000? In which currency? Dollars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, we never spent $100,000 on our on, on marketing game. Um, uh, usually, like ten, twenty thousand dollars is more than enough. Should be enough. Uh, like, $20,000 is like, that, that's more than enough. And the only yeah. time you actually want to spend that money on marketing is like two, Two months before launch, one month after launch of the game, or like three months before before the game launch. That's the only time you would want to spend your your budget on. Uh, uh, this one, but this one, you want to spend any serious money on you know marketing your games. You can still you know uh, spend a little bit on Twitter ads, like twenty bucks there, or some Facebook promotion. Uh, but when the serious money comes in, it's better to do it like. Uh, I'd say two months before the launch and one month after, so you can still get you know that steady income of people buying. As yeah. again, because Steam looks very closely in the first weeks of, of, of the game's release, how is it doing? Um, if you want to spend more, please do. But uh, you, you always have to you know have, have right. certain yeah. expectations. Um, but yeah, normal, normally it's like uh, 10, 10, 15 thousand. That includes going to convention? Huh? That includes going to convention? Uh, yeah, well, convention cost, that depends. Again, because if you're, if you're going solo, that's one story. If you're going with, for example, uh, if we sign a game, we cover all the convention costs and all the booth costs. So the developers don't have to, you know, pay. pay. Yeah, yeah. We always say, like, if you want to come to the convention with us, uh, or I, uh, you, you pay for your flights, but, you know, we will handle all the accommodation and all the other stuff. Um, yeah, and also, you know, one thing is good actually, which just came to pop in my head, is uh, you also need merchandise. You know, like yeah. t-shirts, uh, badges, uh, stickers, uh, you know, roll-ups, and uh, very cheap to make in China. <laughs> Cheaper in Indonesia. 
Really? Yeah, I guess so. How much for a t-shirt? How, how much is it to print out a t-shirt? Like, oh, if, 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 you, you know, if you print in bulk, let's say. Five bucks. Five bucks. Like, 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 so yeah, I, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like the price of the merchandise. Yeah, the, the, the price of the marketing. So if you, okay. but again, like for example, we would cover all the costs for the merchandise as well. So if you work with a publisher, they usually uh, cover that. And sometimes, if you want a minimum guarantee, so you, you also get a down payment like of ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. But the publisher would give it to you, and uh, you keep working on the game, and they handle all the rest. And it all depends on the, which kind of contract you sign. Um, yeah. And usually the publisher also covers the marketing costs. So if, well, like when we did the promotion for Lost Castle and the ones we're doing now for our other games, like uh, we do, we're the ones that spending money. Sorry, you had a question for a long time. Sorry. Uh, I'm a bit confused. Is that $20,000 for a worldwide launch? Yeah, yeah, worldwide, worldwide, worldwide. So that includes uh, getting the influencers in China to stream and you know the news outlets because you have to pay them because China. Uh, and also worldwide, yeah, yeah. Including US. Uh, including US. Uh, but with US, we didn't spend that much money uh, on influencers. Uh, we just, uh, most of our money went to shows, uh, to, to going to different shows, to getting to meet the people, and that just transferred into the game being on YouTube, the game being streamed. Um, yeah, yeah we, 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 we didn't spend, uh, I think we actually. I, we didn't pay. Any, uh, we didn't provide any monetary subsidy to any of the influencers in the West. Um, yeah, uh, most of it was spending on, on the promotion in China. And with Lost Castle, we got lucky because it exploded in China, and then people outside of China started to take notice because they were like, "Oh, this is an indie game," but it, it's like already like oh, two hundred thousand copies, and then you know it's transferred into the West. People started taking notice because they were like, "Oh, it's a game from China, which is not shit." You know, but it's not like a free-to-play stuff. It, it, this still is that stigma that you know made, made, made in China. But luckily now it's getting better. There's a lot of great games coming out. Uh, already have come out. Already launched on Steam, like I see I'm the Hero. Um, for example, uh, the the game from Taiwan, Detention. It's a great game. Um, yeah. So it just. Comes down to where you want to allocate the cash, but uh, yeah, if you sign with the publisher, usually they're the ones that should be taking care of the payments. Um, in the end, it's just you, get, you do the revenue split. So if you if you publish in Steam, Steam takes thirty percent, so you're left with seventy, and then you split that seventy. And no, normally it's like sixty forty or seventy thirty. So thirty for thirty or forty for the publisher, and sixty or seventy goes for the for the developers of the seventy percent that have left because Steam takes a cut. If you don't publish in Steam, if you do like, uh, what's like, uh, if you do it with Chrono GG, uh, then there's no no cost, you know? so you can you, you can make the discount, so you don't lose money. Uh, and there's a bunch of other platforms in China you can publish a game without the need of having the uh, GABP, the government approval, because you can sell the game on, uh, let's just say, Chinese version of eBay, Taobao, it's like an internet marketplace, and. Those guys buy keys in bulk and then just sell them for, 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 for the price you agreed on. Yeah. Uh, don't sell your keys in GDMA. Uh, yeah, shame. A lot of stolen keys. Yeah. So that's only the life cycle. Only life cycle for that. That's how much we're going to spend. No, I mean, that's, uh, that's around the amount we spent with Lost Castle for the pre launch promo. Like, because uh, that also includes uh, paying uh, to make trailers. Um, you know, contacting all the social medias, uh, all of that jazz. Uh, um, let's say like this, even though with 3000 or probably $5,000 you can already launch the game. So basically you don't have to have, uh, let's say, uh, $20,000 a month. You, you don't have to have those much of money. What I'm, uh, something that I'm trying to say is, even though with 5,000 US dollars probably, you could already market your game. Let's say if you, your game is a mobile game, let's say, you just have to pay $25 for the Google Play Store, and then you just have to upload your APK, and uh, another 
$40,975, you could run into the Facebook ads, Google ads, ad networks, and you could divide it by 0 0.8 in average. That is the number of insults that you're gonna get. Uh, you're gonna get, sorry. And multiply it by 70% of conversion rate is gonna be your DAU. Multiply it again by 0.2% to be your top up players. And retention should be like in the seven days, still appeared around 40%. That is the best way. So basically, even though with $2,000, $5,000, you could already launch your game. That is for a mobile. But for the Steam game, I think yeah, it's, it's your expertise. I mean, you, you don't have to have a budget if you want to launch on Steam, but it always helps. Like, but again, you, usually if you go with a the publisher, they handle all the costs. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to self-publish, it's a bit different. If you if, if you're if you're very confident in your abilities in your social media skills, that you feel like you're gonna get those numbers, you, you can try self-publishing, and uh, uh, sometimes it works. Yeah, there, there's been several cases that you know. I, uh, people do really, really good, um, and uh, with, with a minimal budget. But you would, you would still need to go to at least some shows because if you don't go to any shows, it's, yeah. uh, it's 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 very difficult. Not to say it's, it can't be done, but it's a very low percentage that you would be able to succeed. Yeah, because there's just there's so many games now coming out. There's it's just the market is saturated. Not always, because uh, for example, one of the games that uh, recently launched in China um, was, was a mobile game, in fact. Uh, and it was, you know, just your typical Chinese mobile game, so it was like an MMO fantasy RPG. And uh, the guy spent several million uh, rather B, which is like, uh, let's say like 300, 300, 300 thousand dollars, 400 thousand dollars to play the ad of the game before the World of Warcraft movie. So in all the cinemas, like you spent a lot of money to, for that thing to be played before the movie. And like in China, the, the movie did super good, like everybody went to watch see it. So you know, he got that revenue, the game flopped. It didn't make any money at all because uh, well they messed up with a bunch of things and yeah. also the, the name um, they messed up with the name because the, the name they picked in Chinese was the same name Darksiders is in Chinese so people got confused they were like what the hell this is not Darksiders and they just uninstalled the league um, so no it doesn't always help I, uh, uh, another example again mobile game uh, you know the nonstop rampage night I think it's a developers from Finland on mobile game. Non-stop night. Uh, anyways, uh, they did another version of the game, with pretty much a reskin. Instead of a knight, it's Chuck Norris. Really? And he did the promo, <laughs> and everybody, everybody hated it. Everybody, they got such a, ba a bad backlash. They're like, "Oh my god, just don't stop it! Like, don't, don't do it." Um, it depends what kind of campaign you do. You, most of the time, uh, I don't think you need it because people, when, you, when, when uh, from what I've seen, they try hard. They try to be like, "Oh, hip and cool." And they're not. So, they're just, you know, it does more bad than good. <coughs> from what from, from I would witness, at least. Unless we're talking about, uh, you know, celebrities in the gaming industry, <coughs> let's say like some famous YouTubers or Twitch streamers or, or voice actors, that's a whole different story. But if we're talking about generic, like movie stars, that's so much. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, I think we need think, more versions. Yeah, I think this this will go for a long time. I mean, the the topic is very interesting, and we will, we can get so many uh, big insights. But unfortunately, our time for this talk is up. But if you still have questions for Flat and Mickey, you can uh, question them directly after this. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. It's not like I have a life. <laughs> <laughs> really, you don't have a life on the wall. Besides, the reality of a publisher. Yeah, yeah, it would be great. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> your time. <laughs> Thank you for your time. 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 Th